So looking at the MDT for the route that we're going to be covering off today in the other side for Mythic Plus, this is a tyrannical based route, but there will be a fortified route in the description as well. And I will cover the changes and differences in that route. So quickly looking at the route that we're covering in today's commentary, this tyrannical route, we're going to start off, we're going to do this opening pull here. And we're going to kill Woe and take the Woe skip all the way to Hakar. So running all the way around the ring into Zolgarub, all the way to the end of this hallway where we're going to fight this last pack here, which will open the door into Hakar. We go in, we do Hakar, we blow our first Lust or Hero here, kill Hakar, and then we fight these packs as we go down out into the inner ring again. Fight this bottom pack, fight this first Enraged Spirit. Into the front of Mechagon, we do this double pull here. Again, we're killing Wo here, and then we're going to skip all the way inside to the Mana Storms. An Engineer will activate the button here if you've got one, which you preferably will. Skip the Slimes here all the way into the Mana Storms. We will fight the Mana Storms when Mil uh, Maleficent becomes active. We'll blow our second Heroism here. We'll travel out the pipe, and we'll fight this pack here with the Relics. We're going to skip this padding drill here wait for it to go to the side and skip out back into the inner ring and start working our way towards Ardenwield we kill the second enraged spirit we kill this pack out the front here with the urn and then we're moving into Ardenwield Ardenwield you can pull however you like this is the pull pattern I like to use we do four packs here a two pack then we pull the right side here with this stealth pack of spriggans on the urn uh, with the padding blade beaks and then we just sort of work our way around here around the dragon move down and then we take these stealth three that are in this little nook onto the final boss dealer here or onto the third boss dealer here i should say sorry we blow our third heroism or lust here then we're legging it back up for the portal we kill this last pack to finish our percent we come back out and we do the final boss so that is the tyrannical route that i'll be showing you today on the commentary if you are doing this on a fortified key and you can also apply this on tyrannical too uh generally going to hakar with tyran is the more friendly pug strat that i've seen you can absolutely do this route i'm about to show you though in fort and heroic settings as well you get an extra lust basically out of it opening pull here you lust and you kill woe you go all the way to ardenwield you do ardenwield in the exact same pull pattern by the time you get down to dealer you use your second heroism you come back out clear the same way around mechagon double pull Woe skip to Mana Storms, out the tunnel, kill this. Back around the ring towards Zalgarub, you finish with your fourth hero on Hakar, come out and you do the final boss Muzala. So if you prefer to do the route that way, you absolutely can as well. So let's get into the commentary and have a look. Okay, so let's get into this run. So the opening pull here is going to be three Risen Cultists, three Bone Soldiers and one Risen Warlord. We're going to kill Woe in this pack. Now the Risen Warlord cannot be slowed, it periodically casts Undying Rage, which increases its damage done by 100% and makes them unkillable whilst they're enraged. So they need to be soothed if they're in that enrage effect to be able to be killed, otherwise you just need to kite them until the enrage falls off and then the mob can be killed. I actually played this opening pack really poorly, I've got sort of no idea what I was doing sitting on runes, a bit of a hard yikes there, but anyway, can't do much about it now. The Bone Soldiers, when they're standing still, will cast Bone Strike. It's a hard-hitting magic ability, so make use of magic DRs if you're going to plant your feet and fight them. Otherwise, you can just kite them around slowly. The Cultists have two casts, Scribe and Dark Lotus. The Scribe's what you want to kick, and the Dark Lotus are little purple swirlies on the ground. Just don't stand in them. So from here, we kill that Risen Warlord. Eventually, when the Enraged falls off, you can see it's about to tick off and he'll die. And then we're taking our Woe Skip, and we are running all the way up here into Zulgrub and we're going to run all the way to the end to this last pack here at Akar's door. This pack has two Death Walkers, one Priest and one Hexa in it. The Priest will cast Heal and the Hexa cast Lesser Healing Wave. If you have to make a clutch choice as to which mob you're going to kick if you only have one Interrupt available, make sure you prioritize the Priest's Heal over the Hexes. The Priest's Heal is a full heal. Priest will also flee at 20%, so make sure you stun, incapacitate, grip it back, whatever you can, to make sure it doesn't run and socially aggro any of the other mobs that you've skipped in the hallway. The Deathwalkers, they cast a Bladestorm, and they stack a bleed on you as well. And you can stun the Bladestorms, or you can use that time when they're Bladestorming to slow them and stay away to drop your bleed debuff. Otherwise, Kyrian Fireworks or a Dwarf Racial is really powerful against it as well in getting rid of that bleed. So once they're dead, we're moving inside the door and we're going into Hakar. Now Hakar is one of the first checkpoints you'll face in this route in this dungeon and it's obviously one of the checkpoints along with Dealer in this dungeon, especially on Tyrannical. The biggest thing to deal with on Hakar is the Blood Barrier. This does damage to everything, allies and enemies, and adds it all up into form that Blood Barrier Shield. The more damage reduction you have when it's cast, the smaller the shield will be. 
The group wants to be using immunities or DRs each time blood barrier triggers and killing the adds is also important to reduce the size of the blood barrier shield. Generally, I'd advise lusting after the second blood shield has gone off as the deeper you get into this fight, the harder it becomes. You can also hero off the bat once uh, with everyone's CDs straight up if you think you won't struggle in the later stages of the encounter. As the tank, you need to be aware of Hakar's tank buster piercing barb. This is a double strike. The first is a large physical damage hit, followed by a magic damage strike straight after. It's crucial that you have active mitigation rolling for each hit and use a cooldown if you're about to take a hit and you are not topped off, especially on tyrannical settings. So that's pretty much it. As I said, DRs when the blood barrier is about to trigger, try and kill those adds as the damage for it works off you and the adds up as well to contribute into that shield. That's why it's important to kill the adds as well. So we're going to skip through the rest of Hakar here and then we're going to work our way down the hallway. So finishing up Hakar here and then working our way down the hallway. There's going to be some new mobs in this hallway and they're the devoted adds that I want to talk about. Now there's five in this hallway, three in this pack and two in the pack at the other end. Once engaged, they'll start casting Devoted Sacrifice. You need to stun or disorientate this so the cast doesn't get off. So Warriors, you can use things like Fear, Shockwave, Storm Bolts. Druids can Incap Roar, Typhoon, Mighty Bash, Paladins, uh, Blinding Light, Hodge. DKs can Death Grip, Mass Grip, Asphyxiate, Monks, Rock, Para, Leg Sweep. DHs, you can use your Sigils, uh, Imprison, your Stun. Just whatever you do, make sure that that cast doesn't get off. Pulling these packs back and using the urn to polish up these ones. And then we're just going to progress down the rest of the hallway, killing those devoted. We're going to kill Ur here. And then we're going out into the inner ring to fight this pack at the bottom. Now, the inner ring pack down here has one Death Speaker, two Raptors, one Risen Cultist, and three Bone Soldiers. And we'll be killing Ur here. The most important thing in this pack is the interrupt on the Death Speaker's cast, which is Shadow Core. They'll also cast Death, em Death Embrace. If you have a mage in your group, they can actually spell steal Death Embrace for a 100% haste increase. If there are no mages, you can just dispel it off the mob. Every 20 seconds or thereabouts, the Death Speaker will cast Erupting Darkness. It's a massive charged up frontal purple swirly thing that will punt anyone it hits into Narnia. It is really hard to see where the, when the mobs are all congested over it, which way it's going. Try your best to see where it's going though, and then get to the other side of it so you don't get hit. Once we've dealt with that, we're going to move off towards Mechagon and that first Enraged Spirit. Now, pending where the pad is, because we actually have a pretty ordinary one here, you want to play this Enraged Spirit on this side with the urn. So what you can do is that you can either just run through it and run it off to the urn, or you can jump off from these platforms down to the other one if you wanted to skip it. We thought about it and then we elected to just pull it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to CD the first uh, Rage and then we're going to earn the second one. Now, there's a weak horror in the description if you are the Night Fae person clicking the urn here. It'll tell you when to click the urn to stun the rage exactly. It's a lifesaver, so make sure you get that. You can see the rage going off here, and we're just using CDs. So, AMZ, Druids can Heart of the Wild and heal out a Convoke. Paladins can sack someone if they're lacking defensives. Brewmasters can Zen Med. Whatever you've got to contribute in, in surviving with the healer is absolutely required. These enraged masks can be stunned. So if you are in danger of standing in enraged masks, you need to clear the urn area, leg sweeps, shock waves, spears, uh, any of that stuff will get rid of those masks. So we deal with that enraged spirit and then we're moving down to the bottom of Mechagon where we're going to pull these raptors and the two risen warlords. Now I don't have uh, dancing room weapon up at the moment, so I kind of just farm that back. And then I pull all of these in together. Now we're killing Woe here, and then we're going to skip all the way to Mechagon. So we've got two of these, just watch the Enrage. Uh, and then we're going to skip all the way with our Woe skip here, all the way through Mechagon. So Mechagon, generally a really slow area. By doing this, you save yourself a whole heap of time in this key. So we're just going to run all the way through this. An Engineer can hit the button here, which makes skipping the Slime Conveyor Belt a lot easier. So we're going to skip over all of this. The three slimes will come out and then we're just going to run across the conveyor belt and we're going to get to the mana storms. So, okay, let me just fast forward us to the mana storms here. You can actually keep the first boss mill house in the middle of the room and you can assist in soaking the beams if required for your DPS if they have to move. The DPS will be lining up red arrows on each side of the boss to interrupt Diabolical Doom, which is a 4.2 second cast that you need to interrupt. But the only way you can interrupt it is with the ability that Maleficent is casting off on the sidelines called Echo Finger Laser X. Now, you, as the tank, you really need to watch, and I get a little bit unlucky here thinking that I was out of Ur's stun. 
uh, you really need to watch that when the zag goes through from the echo, echo laser finger X, that you don't get stunned as well. So just take a step back off the boss, be at max melee range and you won't get stunned. You don't actually want to bust your nut on Millhouse here in the opening. If you manage to get him down to 10% in the first sequence, he will leave the fight and you won't gain access to his ability when he's not in the fight of Shadow Fury, which you need to stun Maleficent's abilities with. You'll use your second heroism or your bloodlust as soon as Maleficent comes down though, and she is active. So I'm just going to fast forward through to Maleficent coming down here. Now when Maleficent drops down, what you want to do as the tank is pick Maleficent up I'm just going to show you the orientation of this. So this is where we drop down. I'm in the middle. I'm going to take Maleficent either over to this steam patch here or over to this side. She teleports here. So you want to be either in these two spots. So pick Maleficent up and then we're going to, I'm going to take her all the way over to the wall. Now when Maleficent is active, Millhouse goes away and he'll start casting Shadow Fury. And this is the purple circle that will go around a targeted player and can be used to stun Maleficent. As the tank, as I said, when she engages, pick her up, bring her over to the edge of the room like I've done here. This will cause the bombs to only go out one way, making it easier for your group to catch. And when she teleports, your group will be in a, a perfect position to put the Shadow Fury on her and not lose any uptime. Now you can see Shadow Fury is this purple circle that goes around the players. They need to make sure that they're not including you as the tank in this stun, and you just need to make sure that you're not putting yourself in it as well. Shadow Fury's main cause though is to be used when she goes into this aerial robot chicken phase. You can put the debuff over her, stun it, and that's how you avoid the damage from that. So that's pretty much it. The only other thing to be aware of with Maleficent is the Buzzsaw. It's a large stacking debuff sequence that goes through. It is a bleed. So again, Kyrian Files, Dwarf Racials can get rid of that. And that's pretty much it. So we're going to fast forward here through Maleficent and then we will get down to going out the tunnel. So. We've killed Maleficent uh, and Melhouse, and now we're coming out of the tunnel here. And now we're going to kill these mobs that we skipped in Mechagon with just this pack anyway. So there's the Rough Rough and the Four Headless Client here and the Encrypted Affixes. You'll be killing Ur here. Be aware of these volatile memories that you'll pull when you come out. They're in that left corner as you come out of the tunnel. Get a rop down, stuns, knocks, anything you can as they'll start to detonate as soon as you pull them. You just don't want to get exploded by them. Ruff Ruff will cast Wolf, which is a sonic bark. It's a big blue circle that'll go around a target. As the tank, you can get targeted with that as well. DKs, you can AMS or IBF the stun. Paladins, I think you can pre-freedom it or you could bubble it as well. Um, but just make sure if you get that, that you move out and that you're not standing in as well to get stunned. Make sure you're kiss kicking the discharges on the clients. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fix this, finish this up, and then we're going to wait for the drill to pat. Here it is here. Once it goes over there, it stays for a while. You can gateway if you've got a warlock. Otherwise, just hug the wall and run out. And then we're going out into this inner ring and we're going to deal with the second enraged spirit. Now, I'd absolutely advise fighting this second enraged spirit all on its own. Sort your cooldowns. You will likely get two rages depending on the key level. Just quite a lot of damage to manage through. We decide in our infinite wisdom that we thought it would be a fantastic idea to pull the Raging Spirit into the pack outside Ardenwield and use the urn because why not? Um, so we get to the top here and then we decide that we are going to pull the Enraged Spirit in with this pack and earn it. Now there is a spot on the other side of the stairs. So over here, you can see this little stair bit here. On this side, if you go and pull them and stand in there as a tank, that will line of sight the mobs and they will all come and stack up on you, which makes it really easy to group these up. So remember that that's the spot that you want to go to. So here we're going to pull this in. We're going to have a Death Speaker, three cultists, one soldier, one raptor, and we're going to have the enraged spirit as well. I'm going to move in. I'm going to stand in that little spot on the corner. And then again, the Death Speaker and the Shadow Core kicks are massively important. And then getting the urn off and just trying to kill this, if this is the strategy that you're going to go for, is important, but there is a whole lot of damage. You've got that giant eruption that you need to watch out for as well and not get punted off the edge. There's a lot going on. I would never recommend doing this, uh, you know, as a recommended strat, but that's what we went for. Uh, it didn't actually pay off in the end. We ended up killing everything except for the two most important mobs being the speaker and the enraged spirit. So kudos to us. Uh, we finish the, the speaker and the enraged spirit up though, and then we head off into Ardenwield. So moving into Ardenwield here, I'm just going to talk you through my pull pattern of what I do here. And again, you can break this up uh, however you like. I open by doing the four packs here, which is four Shimmer Moss, three Rune Stags, and three Spriggans. Uh, I just find pulling four packs here is fairly comfortable. 
These don't do a lot. You've got enough room to kite. Just don't stand in the blue swirls uh, and make sure you keep jumping and you shouldn't have too many issues. So I do the four pack there. I then do this double pack here. So this pack and the padding one that goes up and down here. I do this double pack here just to recharge cooldowns. So I get through this double pack and then I go to do the urn pack. So with the urn pack, I'm basically just pulling the right side of this side of the lake here and the plat uh, padding blade beaks. I don't want that. Uh, don't want the hatchlings that are up the other end. So there's the three padding blade beaks. I'm going to grab these three blade beaks in the water. There might be four blade beaks in the water here. Sorry. I grab those. We've got the, that's the, these spriggans here are the little stealth ones that were around the urn. So we're just going to drag them back. And then this is going to be what I pull for the urn pull here. So the urn's going to get uh, cast in a moment. They're all going to get stunned and we're going to damage them. Now, loads of room to kite here as well. You can put slows down. You can use the pillar if you need to kite around as the tank. You've got loads of room to do it. So the, the blade beaks stack a debuff on you. You don't have to stand in and just face tank them the whole time. Make sure you are kiting. As they're starting to die, I'm going to grab these two blade beaks in the water here. And I'm going to grab these three rune stags over at the side. And then I'm going to start working my way around the dragon, getting the three stealth spriggan packs. Now, I don't advise ever pulling the dragon, especially in pug groups and things like that. Uh, I know there are some groups that pull the dragon. I just think it's a real hassle and really no need. So avoid picking up the dragon. So we're going to pull these three packs around the, the dragon here as we work our way towards dealer. And then before we go down, I think we want to be 86% just before we leave this area. So 86.46%. Then we're going to move down here. Now important, we don't want this matriarch here. This blade beak, if it's at max distance, you can socially aggro it or taunt it from here and it will not pull the matriarch. If you cast an ability on it though, it will however. So just be aware of that. So we're going to pretty much gather all of this and start working our way down. We do get the hatchling. Just know when you pull the hatchling, it'll do this fright and cries. You need to stun it and then kill the hatchling quickly. If that goes off, it pulls everything around it, even the stuff down here in the water. So we're going to make our way down towards dealer here. Now there's a little nook that I just want to show you down the bottom here as we go down. It's just off to the side here. You can see it at the bottom of the screen. If I go and stand in this little hidey hole right here to my left, uh, I will grab three spriggans that are stealth there and we're going to take those onto dealer. So I'll just work my way through there and hopefully I can land on the right spot here. Here they are here. So I'm standing in there. I've got the three spriggans out. And now I'm going to run them down onto dealer and we're going to use another hero and get through dealer. Now dealer is another massive checkpoint, especially on tyrannical. Every nine seconds, somebody's going to have to pass the debuff arcane lightning to a new target. The debuff pulses on the target every three seconds, damaging and granting them a stack of arcane vulnerability. You will frequently get past this. You ideally want to pass it to somebody who doesn't have stacks. It jumps to the nearest target and you can see a red arrow above the target's head when it's about to jump. Players who get localized explosive contrivance need to stand in one of the displacement pads on the ground. They'll shoot up in the air and they need to detonate in the air. Explosive contrivance is where your whole group needs to move in one, to the, one of the displacement pads, one each and shoot up in the air before the cast finishes. Make sure you communicate which traps you're going to with your group. If someone misses a trap, they will likely die. Now, Warriors, you can stay down and spell reflect this. DKs, you can stay down and AMS it. Paladins, you can spell warding or divine shield it as well. Now, the last uh, thing the boss will do is it'll shoot out beams called displaced blast waves. Just sidestep out of them. So that's pretty much it. Deal is just a pretty large healing check. It's a lot passing that buff around and making sure you communicate which traps you're going through. That is pretty much it. So burning everything on dealer, we're going to get dealer down and then we're going to take the portal back up to the top where we're going to pull three last blade beaks to get our last 3% here. So coming back up to the top, we're going to move down to the water. You can see there's three blade beaks in the water here. I'm going to pull the three blade beaks. I think I accidentally get this hatchling here, which is unfortunate, but again, we just stun the, the fright and cries uh, and we move on with our life. We're killing Woe so we can jet back to Mazala quickly. So we kill Woe. We're jetting back to Mazala as quick as we can. And then we're going to go on to the final boss, Mazala. Now, the first thing to be aware of with Mazala is the relics spawn in a really shitty spot. So they spawn in the center of the platform pretty much when you engage the boss, even slightly further back. So try and be in a position where you can pick them up or you'll have to turn around and grab some unless you've got MDs and tricks and things like that. Depending your key level, your group, you'll be killing Ur or Vi. In a more organized setting, I see a lot more groups go for Vi and that's what we're doing. 
The idea is that we kill Vi just before the portals come up, so we've got that haste buff going over to the totems. Now for the tank's soul crusher, this is the tank busting ability. It really hurts. You will need cooldowns and active mitigation to make sure you survive this. When Muzala reaches full energy, he will cast soul crusher. It deals large upfront physical damage and then applies a nine second dot for the total amount of damage taken by the initial hit as shadow damage, meaning that you want to mitigate as much of the upfront hit as possible, which will reduce the amount that goes into the dot. A nice little tip for blood decays is the initial hit is physical damage, but the dot is magic, meaning you can AMS to immune the dot. And Muzala will cast this Master of Death sequence, which is a uh, three slams. There'll be a slam on the left side, a slam on the right side, and then a slam at the front half of the platform where his hands turn green. You'll need to dodge these. Warriors, again, you can stand in and spell reflect them. DKs, you can use AMS if you're uh, unable to move or you want to stay in and gain runic power. Now, portal coordination is everything, and you can see us going over to a portal phase at the moment. Now, in lower keys, you will all go and one phase your totem. So the healer and the tank will go to one portal, and then the three DPS will all go to another portal each, kill their to or kill their visage, and then they will click the totem, and that'll pretty much be the fight. On higher tyrannical keys, it's pretty much impossible to solo your totem. So what you'll be doing is you'll be sending three players to one uh, totem and two players to another totem. You'll execute that and then you'll come back. You'll do a whole other sequence of the boss and then you'll finish the last two totems. Now, if you're unsure about how the portals work in regards to totem locations, the two portals at the front take you to the far left and far right totems whilst the back left and back right portals take you to the closest left and closest right totem. So when you get pulled back to Mazala, have a look at where the remaining totems are on your screen. You can see ours are the left back and right back, which means the front two portals are the portals that we're splitting up to again. You can see the dodging of the uh, the death sequence there as well. And it's just, a fight, it's just a rinse repeat fight. It is a really, really long fight on Tyrannical, even on Fortified. You need to make sure that you have cooldowns saved up for when you get over to the totem phases as well. I set on my dancing room weapon for the entire first phase, worrying that I wouldn't have it up for the totems. It comes just after a minute, so I might have been able to farm it back, but I just wanted to play really safe. If you can't kill your totem, you put extra uh, boss phase cycles into this and you can generally put a deplete onto your key if that's the case. So that is the fight. If you have any questions at all, if you think I've missed anything, hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much for checking out the guide. See you all next time. See you, fam.